unfortunately what we're probably going to have to lead off with is what everybody else has talked about for like the last two days and that's well just day but obviously let's start with the Devonte adams news and then we can move on to the amari cooper news which i think is less significant but still like worth talking about um the trade conditions well first let me just start with i told you there was never any other team in the mix to get Devonte adams at all it was always the jets um he was on a plane after the monday night game before the news even broke and was sleeping at roger's house like when the news came out so like it was always that no matter what i mean yeah we said that we said that the jets were going to be the team that made the most sense and here we are it was the only team the it was the team. it was the only team. There was never any other team that was going to trade for for Tay. Uh, the trade conditions: uh, a conditional third round pick from the Jets are trading to the Raiders for Devontae Adams. That becomes a second if either of the following happen. Adams must be a first or second team All Pro, and he must be on the active roster for an AFC Championship game or Super Bowl. Um. Pretty, pretty fair trade yeah. um, and high benchmarks because if that hits, then like the trade worked for them, obviously. And the uh, the Raiders also got rid of his entire salary. If I read that correctly, um, the Jets are taking on taking it all on. Which yeah. is, I think, the biggest significance of this entire trade. Um. Ultimately, I think I don't think Devontae Adams is like the same player that he once was, but I think that if he were to go anywhere, like linking back up with Rodgers was like his best opportunity to like return to. I don't know if it's like top five play, but top 10 play potentially to his best form that he's capable of right now. And that was going to be with Rodgers because you see what's going on with like the Jets and their main issues is just like timing. And Rodgers likes playing with high IQ guys who are going to, he's going to throw to the ball to a spot where the defense is not going to be. And he needs to have the guy who's going to be catching the ball on the same page as him and making sure that they are making every single right move that he is thinking in his head, which is a big ask for anybody. Yeah. But, yeah, Garrett Wilson's done a pretty good job thus far, but, but the Mike Williams situation is, yeah, is it's it just not, it's not going to work. And then lastly, Tay and him have thousands and thousands of reps together. So I don't think like, I don't think that if like Tay went to Washington, it would be that big of a deal, but him going to the Jets, like everybody's kind of down on the Jets right now, and and like, oh, like blah blah blah, like they're not that good. This, that, and the third. The year that the top, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers went to the Super Bowl and won it, they finished the season nine and seven. They went went on a run in the NFC and beat the fourteen and three Chiefs in the Super Bowl. This is this could be a very this could very much well be an, a situation where they might not be at full form until the closer to the end of the season. But every single game that they've lost so far has been by one point, three points, and three points. They're not getting blown out. They're in every one of these games. It's just like the little things that like will, when they get over the hump, like that yeah. is what's going to win them the games. And it's not going to happen right away. So for everybody that's kind of down on the Jets, I I'm not understanding why. I mean, I'm I'm certainly not down on the Jets. Um, I think Jets fans, from what I've seen, seemed pretty happy about this trade. How could you not? I mean, you just got it. You just improved your wide receiver room. Um, I think the scariest thing, if you're a Jets fan, is if this somehow doesn't work out, you're just fucked. Because where do you go from here? Like, what do you, what can you what change can you make that's going to make this team any better than the um players that you have in this locker room at right now i mean you can make a coaching adjustment but clearly i don't know if the coaching adjustment is what 
necessarily the issue was. I thought the Jets looked better on offense um, the other night. Um, but I don't know if a coach coming in here is ultimately going to make that much of a difference if the players aren't executing. Um, now, I understand it was the first first night, new coach, whatever. Um, but then they turn right around. They add Devontae Adams. They bring in a guy that had, like you said, thousands of reps with with um, Aaron Rodgers and a guy that um, they basically are on the same page pretty much at all times from what it seemed like throughout both of their careers. Um, if this team can't get it done and I'm a Jets fan, where, like where where do you look? Where do you turn to? What do you what do you do? I mean, you have Will McDonald, you have Sauce Gardner, you have Garrett Wilson, you have um Brees Hall, you have you have all these guys. You have Roger Rogers isn't retiring after this year. I know like everybody thinks that that's like the case or whatever it may be. Like that makes no sense. Um they're fine. I, I don't know. Like, I don't know what, like, this is going to be Rogers towards Achilles last year. This is going, that isn't what Rogers expected. The only way Rogers retires this season, if he wins a Super Bowl. Um, but beyond that, like, I think we see him, Tay, Garrett Wilson back all with the Jets next year. There isn't anything that they can do. Uh, because yeah, that's what I'm saying. They have all, all these in. guys. And, yeah, they have these guys now. You have to play well. You have all of the talent on both sides of the football to be a legitimate contender. And if you don't go out there and make an AFC championship, win a playoff game, et cetera, like you're, you're screwed if you're a Jets fan. Cause you look at this team and you're like, this is the best team we've had on paper in how many years, 20 years, 20 plus years. I don't think and that the player, I don't think from like a, personnel perspective from like offense and defense like players wise matter the only thing that's going to matter is like front office coaching like that will change if they don't win like a playoff game or whatever that might be but like they're pl the players itself aren't going to change right i i know that you're not i i know that they're not going to get rid of any of these players but like is what coach are you going to be able to bring in that has an immediate impact that can get this team to take that step. I think this asking. is what I think this is what I think this is it. You think the, that the they can't staff. get any better than this? This is the coaching staff that they're going to have. Right. And I'm saying, what if nothing, what if this doesn't work? What do they do? Well, then they're going to have to go out during the off season next year and hire somebody else. Okay. And I'm asking you like, what does that look like? Cause Mike, we're getting old, to the point where all these guys are getting, all these like Rogers is getting older. I don't think he's going to retire either. Devontae yeah. Adams is getting is getting older. Don't think he's going to retire either. But like you have the players in place. Like another year of Jets football where you you see this and you're like, okay, we've got something. And then they just can't put it together. It has got to be the if, only way they the can. Only it's way just the, the, the only way that this blows up is if they go like seven and ten, eleven. That could happen. Like seven and ten. Like if they go seven and ten, then like yeah, we're having a completely different conversation. But like I don't think that it's necessary to have that conversation currently. Like, do you know what I'm trying to say? Like, yeah, let's like so you're ifs, saying, let's see it play out. There's let's, so many ifs, ands, or buts. Yeah. Like that. I know. I I'm just trying right to be now, devil's advocate here. I think right now it's like, hey, we have everybody. If things go really like, if they go out and win a playoff game and lose in the next round, like, be like, you know what? Like, we have some positive positive like stuff going let's hire a new coach like let's hire an actual head coach and like get somebody in the building maybe hire a new oc like actually get somebody in the building and then we're in a completely different place yeah i'm just i'm just playing devil's advocate because coming into the season the jets had literally all the hype and it hasn't started off how anyone's expected they brought in um Rogers guy and now I think those expectations have jumped back to where they were coming into the season yeah and like I said I think that like when you look back at I, I think I think the Tampa Bay Buccaneers when Brady first got there is the most accurate depiction of like what like this could look like and right. 
like I said, they went nine and seven were a wild card team, went on a run, won the Super Bowl against the 14 and three Chiefs. Like that is like the best possible version of like what could happen. You think and, you think that nine and seven is the best version for this team? I, I think that like if I think that like the people who were like coming into the season thinking that the like Jets would be like 14 and three or like win t- like 13, 12, 13, 14 games. Like, I think that that is, was extremely ridiculous. And I think during our like preview, I think we both picked them to win 10 games. Yeah. So like, I, I don't know. I, 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 like we're so. quite literally like we're, we're yeah, in the right same there. exact spot that we were in the summer I still think that they win 10 games and they just got Devonte Adams, which him and Rogers are like best friends. And yeah. like I said, if this was another 31 year old wide receiver, if this was Amari Cooper to the that Jets. the Jets traded for, I would sit here and be like, why did they just do that? That was completely stupid. Yeah. But, like, that's not what happened. Like, they got, like, the ultimate possible X factor. And I don't think people have realized it yet. Their best – this was their best possible fix to the season this year. And everybody who was like, well, Tay has a – Tay wasn't hurt. He was not hurt. You're an idiot if you believe that. He He was practiced today. Yeah, he is not hurt, bro. Like, he was waiting to get traded. So, yeah, like, people fine. who are like, well, we'll see if he clears his medical. Like, no, he, he practiced. He was healthy and ready to go. He just wasn't going to play for the for the Raiders ever again. He ha- literally has his Jets PE already. Oh, he he was ready. Those were he those had those. Were he had those in the yeah. summer. He Yeah, those were he was ready. He was ready to go there. Yeah, he had he had those Jordan five lows ready to rock and roll in the jet green, whatever shade that is over the summer. He was waiting to break them out. Yeah, no, they were sick. Um, So, yeah, Jets, I feel the like I said, I feel the exact same way. This is going to take time. I don't know why everybody's like freaking out about it and every like. They're two and four. Their schedule, I was looking at it last night because I was talking to Nick about it. And Nick is a, our resident Jets fan who, like, I feel bad for the guy. They play Pittsburgh, New England, Houston, Arizona, Indianapolis. They might win the next five games. Like, quite literally, there's a real chance that they win these next five games. So, yeah, I agree. I, if they go out and rip five straight, like, what's everybody going to say? If they go four and one during that stretch, what is everybody going to say? Like, yeah, you know what I mean? In a great spot. Yeah, it, it's there. This is an absolutely no time to panic in any way, shape, or form. And I think that Jets fans should feel completely fine. Everybody should feel completely fine. I, like I said, I'm gonna always. I'm gonna keep going back on that example of the when Tom Brady first got to Tampa. I think that's the best way to look at yeah. what's going on right now. Is it yeah. takes time? I think that like when you dropped i don't know i don't remember the timeline or like the headlines and shit back then but i'm sure that there were some points in that season that people were starting to question if tom brady was still tom brady with the bucks i mean if he goes nine and seven 100 there there was definitely talks of should like is Bra- does brady still have it is this hurting his legacy like that's just how how it goes oh, should he absolutely. have stayed in new england like yeah um on the flip side of things, um, the the Bills, honestly, pretty shocking. They went and, and got Amari Cooper. Uh, the Browns received a 2025 third-round pick and a 2026 seventh-round pick, and the Bills received Amari Cooper and a 2025 sixth-round pick. Um, I mean, I first thing that sticks out to me is, like, they they're pretty much admitting defeat on Keon Coleman. Uh, at least right now, at least, at least year one being an impact starter for them. Like he wasn't ready, like is what I'm reading into this. Um, and that's fine. Like not everybody is going to not, there was how many wide receivers taken in this draft, right? Like not every one of them is going to come out and put up Malik neighbors numbers right away. Um, that's just not how it works. So I think it's fine to have this like insurance 
And I think Amari Cooper comes with less drama than former Bills wide receivers. Um, but asking Keon Coleman to come in and be the number one guy, like maybe we got a little bit ahead. Maybe like the Bills got a little bit ahead of themselves. I just don't think he looks good. As much as that pains me to say, because I liked Ke- Keon Coleman seems like a good yeah. dude. He's funny, like all that. Bro, I, I just don't think he's looked that good like over the last few weeks. Um, but they go out and get Amari Cooper. I, I guess like I guess the question for me to you is like, what what do you think about this? Like, does it I just don't think it like matters as much on the grand scheme of things as like everybody kind of feels. And he's 30. Um he'll be this is his age 30 season. Um, I don't think that matters a ton. But I know that he had Deshaun Watson in as his quarterback. But for the first half of the season, for the first six weeks of the season, Amari Cooper just hasn't looked like Amari Cooper. Like during the first week of the of the season, he dropped like two big touchdowns, like two big plays that could have been touchdowns. And like I said, he just doesn't look like himself. I mean, I think going from that Brown situation to a significantly better one in Buffalo where you have a quarterback that is top two in the NFL. Um, You have a well-run organization. Um, You have guys that are competing for something and that want to be there. Um, I don't think the bills problem is offense. I think their run defense probably needs to get a little bit better, but um, I think Amari Cooper, I don't, I don't think it's going to make like a colossal, difference in the grand scheme of this bill's offense but like i think it just completely reshifts amari cooper's focus i think we'll see a better version than what we've seen this far thus far in this season i mean the browns offense are are, are they're just terrible and i know you said oh, he's man. had some drop some drops but like it's very hard to lose focus in in a game like that when you're you you don't stand a single chance and they're not even putting up 20 points i i think i think we'll see a better version of Amari Cooper. Not not what we have seen before, but like I yeah. think he's better than what we've seen up to this point in this season. Yeah, I again again I just it was a move they made the move. I just don't think I I guess like I guess I just don't think I I am more cautious on this move than like how I feel about like the Jets getting Devontae Adams. Like that's a big jump. Like that's that's going to ignite this offense. Like Rogers is going to probably look completely different with, with Tay with, with, with this. Like, I just don't, I don't think much changes personally. I don't, I like, I, I'm not even entirely sure why they went and made this move yet. It felt like, okay, the, the jets made a move. So we have to make one too. Um, I, I, Maybe it came a little early, but I don't know. It felt like because the Jets made a move that the Bills felt like they needed to go out and get a receiver. And I think it makes the receiving room better, but I agree. It doesn't have the same um, boom as the Jets. Boom. Yeah, it doesn't have the same. It doesn't have the same boom as you know why you did it. Um, it does have the same boom as the Jets getting Devonte Devonte Adams. Um, I think the Buffalo Bills are a run first football team, anyways. I think they're at their best when they're running the football, and Josh Allen doesn't necessarily have to throw the ball ninety times a game. He absolutely can, but like the best version of the Bills is when they're pretty balanced on offense, running and passing the football. So um, I don't know. I think I think the receiver room got better. Um, but it felt like it was, a uh, because the jets did this, we have to do this too. Maybe something I'm just a little bit more cautious on than how I feel about the other one. Um, something that I also want to talk about that made its rounds is like the Justin Fields situation. Everybody's like, Justin Fields is four and two. He's a 25 year old quarterback. Uh, how is he going to ha- like, how are they going to bench him for Russ? Like blah, 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 because it's trending that Russ is going to be the starting quarterback for the, for them moving forward. Um, we did this, but we'll do it again right now. The Steelers are 24th in total yards, 28th in passing yards, 10th in rushing yards, 
20th in total points, 20th on, on third down percentage. Um, Justin Fields is 22nd in passing yards, 25th in, in passing touchdowns, and 20th in overall QBR. Um, Justin Fields is on his second team before his rookie contract is even over. And it is trending towards that he is going to not be he's going to be on a third team by the time his rookie contract when his rookie contract is over, because it looks like he's not going to be staying with the um Steelers moving next year. And something that just stuck out to me big this weekend was they went out and played Las Vegas. They put up 32 points. Justin Fields threw for 145 yards and zero touchdowns. Um, he does nothing for this offense. Everybody who's sitting around being like, well, you're four and two, like blah, 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 this, that, and the third, this is a bottom, this is a bottom tier offense. Uh, Justin Fields might have some decent metrics, but they're also not asking him to do anything of a high degree of difficulty. They dumb the game down for him as much as physically possible and allow him to go out. They don't trust him. And, the first chance that they have an opportunity to bring Russ back from a calf injury, they're doing it. And that should tell you everything that we need to know about this situation. So are you bringing this up as like a pro Russell Wilson or just a negative Justin Fields? I'm not bringing it up as, as either. I'm bringing it up as when we came into this season and people were excited about the Steelers we sat around and said the Steelers have a very bad offense yeah. quarterback, offensive line, running back room, wide receiving core. They're bad. They're still bad. Yep. And what people are not are failing to recognize is like Justin Fields has come in and he's done nothing to earn this job. So now since they have a bottom tier offense through the first six weeks of the season, they're going to turn to a different quarterback to see if there is an opportunity to spark this offense or do anything different. Just not be at the bottom. Yeah. Is that a possibility? I don't know. We have to watch that play out, but right. like in a game where you throw up 32 points and like George Pickens has like two receptions for under 30 yards. Like he's supposed, I heard nothing but from Steelers fans about how great George Pickens was and how he's a number one wide receiver. Um, as of now, like there are one, number one wide receivers who eat who don't have a good quarterback, like etc. So I, I just think that I'm tired of everybody sitting around being like confused of why Justin Fields would be benched through six weeks when he just hasn't done anything and the offense has looked like shit. That, that's the exact reason why he's getting benched. Yeah. No, I I I understand. I uh I the Steelers fans in my life don't even want to go down the Russell Wilson route of this. Um, simply from like an injury perspective, the Steelers O line's a little banged up, and it's also not that great at pass pro in the first place. And they feel as if Justin Fields gives them the best chance moving in the pocket, using his legs to do something on offense. Um, but I, I understand where the Steelers are coming from in this instance. Um, it's a, our defense is always going to be there. Um, can we get anything else out of this offense? And they traded for Russ. Um, they don't owe any, either of these quarterbacks, anything more than this season. So it's a, Hey, let's give this a shot. Can we see if we can get more production from the quarterback position with Russ now that he's healthy and he's able to play? Um, if not great, we tried, we know what we're getting out of Justin in this offense. Um, ultimately we knew we were going to have to probably lean on our defense either way this season, but let's at least see what we have with Russ. Um, mm -hmm. we don't feel like Justin is that much better if at all than what you have in Russell Wilson. So uh, I, I completely understand the mindset here in Pittsburgh, but. I don't really think the outcome that you're going to get with Russell Wilson is going to be that much better than what you get with Justin Fields from an overall offensive perspective. Yes. I think Russ can throw 
probably better than Justin Fields. Um, but I'm not going to go out there and say that a Russ led Steelers offense is going to average 26 points. No, I don't think so either. And that's not what I'm saying. I know. I know you're not. I was like, just giving my like, it, it's, it's so, it's just frustrating to hear like everybody be like up in arms about it when it's like, what is he like? Has he done any, like, has anybody watched the game where he's like done anything? Like, I don't, I, I, I haven't, like, I don't know. I understand though, like where the Steelers fans are coming from too, because you're four and two and you're winning football games and you know that the reason you're good is because your defense, like if it's not broke, don't fix it is how it seems like they're looking at it. Um, because they're winning football games, but I, I just I, then you got to understand where the Steelers are coming from if you're a Steelers fan here too. I think what it comes down to, like you said, like they drop one to Indy, they dropped one to Dallas at home that they should have won, and then they go out against the Raiders, lay the smack down on the Raiders, which we both think the Raiders. Well, I didn't think the Raiders were going to be good. You did. Took their over and wins, and um they lay the smack down on them. And in that game where they put up 32 points, Justin Fields couldn't crack 200 yards passing or a touchdown. Like he threw yeah. for 145 yards and no touchdowns like that. He was so insignificant in a game where they put up 32 points. And it's like, you know what? Like we, we can probably change hands at quarterback and just see what we could possibly have because it feels like somebody else would be able to like, that's like, like, I think I genuinely like no bullshit. Think Mason Rudolph can put up that uh, like a de- better stat line than what Justin Fields has been doing this year. I don't think you're really that wrong. Um, yeah. In a game where they scored what 32 points and they got such minimal production out of their quarterback. I'm sure they're probably looking at it and are like, all right, Russ might have been able to throw one touchdown pass in this game and we win 40 to whatever. Yeah. And at least it looks a little bit better. But again, the Steelers have never seemed like a team to like necessarily care about the optics of a game and how it plays out rather than just winning the football game. Because if your defense is that good and your offense has blown for as long as theirs had, I mean... Why is it now all why is it like now all of a sudden the time where you really care about your quarterback play if you're winning games? Because it, it it hasn't been that way in Pittsburgh for since Big Ben retired, basically. Well, even and like three years before he retired. The reason why they're concerned about this is the reasoning why I said before the season started, Mike Tomlin is on the hot seat and nobody talks about it. If you haven't won a playoff game in almost 10 years and the offense that you put out on a year to year basis is laughable at some point you are going to have to be held responsible for that. You are the head coach of the football team. So I think that's why uh, they, they haven't been a relevant franchise in, they haven't won, gone to a Super Bowl in 20 years uh, won a Super Bowl in like 20 years. They haven't won a playoff game in almost a decade. Like that stuff for a historic franchise who has done nothing but in the past win championships. Like you, you don't think that like the ownership group and the, the Rooney family are sitting around being like, love Tomlin, love everything he's done for us. But like at some point, like we might have to make a change. I agree with you. It's just weird that it's now rather than like five years ago. Like you had to have an idea what you were getting yourself into from an offensive perspective. When you looked at this roster going into the season with Russ being your quarterback with Justin Fields being your quarterback with only having George Pickens as your wide receiver. Um, I don't think they did enough from an offensive perspective to really be anything special on offense no um but it, hey that it is what it is but like, it adds up i also, guess it, it, it adds up year after also, year of they, having that offense it does and they went out and and took kenny pickett in the first round it didn't work they went and then picked up russ and they picked up justin fields and that didn't work like 
they are taking shots at quarterbacks. And if you don't have the infrastructure to develop these quarterbacks, such i.e. Justin Fields, which people seem to feel like they know or have a veteran come in and have it be like a win now type moment, like newsflash for everybody that's involved. And I think me and you feel the same exact way. Uh, Russ probably shouldn't be in the NFL. So like, like going out and getting him like Steelers fans, when they got Russ quite literally were like, yeah, you really let us get a Super Bowl winning quarterback like in Pittsburgh. Well, they didn't watch him play last year. They were literally acting like that. They got one of the best players like of the last like 20 years, like how like Tom Brady went to Buck, the Buccaneers. Like, I think that uh, they are going to make the the. Uh, quarterback change i think it's going to be a disaster and then i think if you throw back justin fields back in there it's also going to be a disaster i think that like i said although the steelers are four and two right now and doing their thing and whatever none of their wins have been impressive and on top of that they are going to go down a dark path they are not built for what's going on right now and i think that it's going to come to light like pretty sooner rather than later i mean coming into it we looked at their schedule and I mean, the um, we th- all, we both thought the Browns would be better than what they are right now, but the Steelers are about to go into a tough stretch of games here. They've got Jets, not I mean Giants or whatever. They've got Commanders, Ravens, Browns, Bengals, Browns, Eagles, Ravens, Chiefs, Bengals to finish off their season, and. I mean, aside from the Browns and probably the Eagles at this point, all of those offenses can probably put up 30 on you. And yeah. without a quarterback, you're probably not going to win. The, like without an offense that you can score points with, um, you're certainly not going to beat many of those teams. I completely agree. But that's all I had to say. Like, I don't get why, like, I just didn't understand like all I've seen was on like social media was like, like I I don't know, like prime Vic got like benched or something like that in Atlanta. Like it was, it's just like, have you guys watched any of the Steelers games? Like nothing, they don't have a pulse on offense. That's why they're making quarterback change. Like it's really not like that hard. Um, Anyway, Thursday night football, uh, the worst game of the entire year thus far. Broncos at New Orleans. Um, the line is two and a half. Uh, the over under is at 36 and a half. I mean, the Saints are so beat up. And yeah, Spencer Rattler running the show. Chris Olave is in concussion protocol, I believe. Yeah, he's not playing this week. Um, the Saints just aren't good. I mean, that, that's really what it comes down to. They're just not, a good football they're player. not, they're not. Um, it there this game being i mean i guess the broncos like aren't really that great of a offensive juggernaut either um hence the line being 36 and a half but um i think this is the broncos game to lose i mean they're healthy they have a good defense they're going up against a rookie quarterback in his second start without his number one weapon um nothing points me in the direction of the saints on Thursday night. The only thing that probably like is in their favor is that it's in new Orleans and like it can get rowdy there for another rookie quarterback. But I mean, on paper, this, this game is, is ugly. Yeah, for sure. Um, I don't have much to say about it, so it is what it is. Um, before we get into it, I have to address something for million dollar picks. I am down $1.4 million. (laughs) I was going to put a million dollars on the on the bills last night to cover two and a half points, and Noah talked me out of it. I don't know why I listened to him, and I put it on a Brees Hall touchdown. And Brees Hall didn't sniff the end zone. He got um, tackled by uh, that by what Taylor Rapp. It was one on one in the open field, and he I'm lost. blaming he Noah tackled. for my loss, and I am not. I do not have my picks ready to go, so I will post my million dollar picks in Discord if you guys want to join it. Because what happened last night, I am a hundred and full fled, a hundred percent full fledged putting it on Noah. That was your <laughs> fault. It was. I had the pick ready to go, and you were you like, wanted Dalton Kincaid touchdown. He didn't score. 
I know that's what you wanted initially, no. and I talked you out of that. No, I wanted I had Bills minus two and a half. That's what I had. And then you like talked me into the Jets. And then you, like, you talked and then, yourself into Dalton Kincaid. And then you were I'll like, take 50% of the blame. No, you, you also tried to win it all back in one in one. I would have won it all back if I if I took if I took the Bills last night, I would have won it all back. A hundred percent. But you didn't, and you don't count the bets you, you told don't me, win. But you told me not to do it. But I didn't make the pick. That was a that was your fault. That's a hundred percent your fault. <laughs> I lost two. I bet on the Jets spread. I put my money where my mouth was, and I lost. Well, I two. in real life, I took the over, and I should have put a million dollars on the over, and the over hit last night. It was close, but it was close. It was. Um, it did hit. Um, okay. We have another London game. We have New England Patriots at the Jacksonville Jaguars. The Jaguars are five and a half point favorites. Of uh, the over under is forty two and a half. Um. The Jags shouldn't be favored by five and a half to anybody in the entire NFL. They're one of the worst teams in the league. Um, this feels like a Doug Peterson, even if they win, I think there's a real possibility that he gets fired, even in a rare win spot. Um, but I actually love this game. Like, I think this is going to actually be a cool, like, an actual good game because we get to watch Drake May, we yeah. get to watch the Patriots, um, which the Patriots aren't like the worst team in the world to watch from like a defensive standpoint. And like last week they're off. Like, like they put up 20, what? 28, 21 It's 41, yeah, 20, 21 or something like that. Yeah. 21 points on the, on the Texans. Like, and that was Drake May's first game. I'm honestly expect, And that was without Ramadre Stevenson. Like I'm expecting the Patriots to kind of like start to kind of put some stuff together on offense. I just think this has like the recipe to be like kind of a decent game. Uh, yeah, I agree with you. I don't understand how the Jags are, are five and a half point favorites against anybody in the NFL. Um, I don't think they're going to win this football game. Um, and I think that they they leave Doug Peterson in London. I, I, to be quite honest, if they weren't in London again this week, mm -hmm. I think they would have fired him. I completely agree. During the game, I was like texting people like, he's fired. And then... I forgot that they played the back-to-back -back London games. And it's time. Like, this is – it's bad. I don't foresee the Jaguars winning this game. And like I said, even if they do win this football game, I think that there's a real shot that Peterson gets fired no matter what. Like, they have decent players. They just can't catch the football. It's actually absurd. Uh, somebody – so somebody texted me this past weekend. They know that Trevor Lawrence is my guy, and they were like, T law sucks. I've seen enough. Like blah blah blah. They dropped said, four touchdowns. I said the stat like where they ha have led the league with the most drops since he's started with them, and like you said, like they dropped four touchdowns last week. Like actually, like he threw dots and like C Kirk dropped one. Gabe Davis dropped two, and Brian Brian Thomas Jr. dropped one. That was like a give me, yeah. and. Yeah, I, I don't know what that reasoning is of why they can't catch the football. Um, let's just call it as it is as well. Their offensive line isn't very good. Travis Etienne was a first-round pick. Uh, he's on bus watch more than anybody else. He's He might not be good at football. Um, he's lost his starting job. It, it, literally. So I, I just think that, like I said before the season started, if Trevor Lawrence – if the Jags had a bad season, Trevor Lawrence is still the starting quarterback. Like people are literally like if to even slightly entertain the idea that thinking that Mac Jones is a better option than Trevor Lawrence, you are, you are just flat a hater. That's really what it is. You're also not benching your recently extended $300 million quarterback. Um, no. Because, Nobody does that. No. The, like you see what the Browns are doing. Clearly they're not going to bench Deshaun Watson. You saw yeah. what the giants did. They're not benching Daniel Jones. Um, why in the hell would the Jack ever bench Trevor Lawrence? The reason they're losing football games isn't uh, like solely on him. So there's zero reason for, for him to go in there. And, uh, or for the Jags to make the move of benching him. And if you are asking for Mac Jones to come in and play quarterback, what the fuck are you doing? 
Did you not watch him in New England lose his job to Kyle Zappi? Yeah, like literally. Wait. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I, I'm 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 right with you. It doesn't make any fucking sense. Sorry for cussing. No, it doesn't make any sense because well, multiple. Like I said, if you're if you're calling for Trevor Lawrence to get benched, but you watch these games, like you you're just a hater. Like I, I T law did throw a bad pick. Like I'll say that like at some point in this game, but like most quarterbacks, Every, everybody does most quarterbacks. throw bad picks like tre, uh, fucking Patrick Mahomes. throws bad picks all the time. And somebody said to me yesterday, it was also the reasoning why I brought up Justin Fields. Like Justin Fields is playing better football than Jacksonville Jaguars right now. I was like, the Steelers would mortgage their future if they had an opportunity to get Trevor Lawrence. Absolutely. So like, so like, so like whatever that, whatever you just said, you're wrong because if, if Trevor Lawrence became available, uh, the teams who don't have a quarterback would, would mortgage the future for him. So it's really that simple. Like he's, he's still a special talent. We've watched him play at a really high level. This is a team issue. This is a coaching issue. Um, and I think T law is going to overcome it. I, I don't see why it wouldn't. They need to get the jugs machine bumping over there in england dude what's going on with c kirk like he is he's a no-show this year like every opportunity that he gets he had before this season had some of the most sure hands in the nfl and yeah. he's like just doesn't have it this year i don't know what's going on i don't know if it's like not getting him involved early enough and then when they go to him late like he's not ready or whatever that might be but like i was definitely expecting a lot more out of the Trevor Lawrence, um, Christian Kirk duo connection. Yeah. I mean, every, somebody has to lead the league in drops, but if you would have told me that it was this Jaguars team, I would have said no. Yeah. Nice man. Um, okay. We talked way too much about this game. Uh, next Philadelphia (laughs) at New York giants. The Eagles are minus three, uh, over under is 43 and a half Saquon Barkley revenge game. If you don't bet him to score three touchdowns, you're an idiot. The only problem that I have about that is I don't know if the, the Eagles can score three touchdowns. Yeah. Um. So honestly, I really like the giants here, but I'm also willing to like, listen to what you have to say, but I do uh, like, I do think the giants could ha- has not op- have an opportunity to win this game. I like where I like the Eagles in this game if Malik neighbors doesn't play, I know he's still in concussion protocol, but him playing makes me feel a lot, makes me a lot very nervous. Um, I think he's, he's playing. Just a, he, I didn't see that it, he, it was a hundred percent yet. He's I saw playing. that he was still going through concussion protocol. Um, I can guarantee he's playing. Well, if he does play, I feel not as good about this game. I think he's just an issue. Um, although, the Giants are missing missing Andrew Thomas. Um, he went down with a foot injury, I believe. He's going to have to have surgery on that. He already got it, Liz Frank surgery. What's her name? Liz Frank. Did she go to high school with us? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, no, I. I think the spread at three is honestly perfect for this game. Um, I honestly, I don't until the Eagles are are able to show me that they can cover a spread. I think that it's a safe bet to just take take whoever they're playing plus whatever um, until proven otherwise. Sure. Um, Bengals at the Browns uh, minus five and a half. The Bengals are favorited uh, over unders 41 and a half. Famously, the Browns have not scored over 20 points this season. They do get Nick Chubb back uh, off of that knee injury. They traded Amari Cooper. This team's in shambles. Yeah, there's not much to like about this game or the Browns. No, not at all. They uh, Their defense is banged up. Their offense is banged up. They just traded away their best wide receiver. Um, this team has no heart, and I understand why. Um, they're forced to line up every week with Deshaun Watson at quarterback. And um, uh, if you're playing a competent offense, and I think the Cincinnati Bengals have shown that the last few weeks. 
Um, I think the Bengals are going to take care of business. Uh, I, I think they probably end up covering five and a half. They should. On paper, they should. Um, I, I don't. I don't know what the what the plan is for covering Jamar Chase and T Higgins. If you're the Browns, no clue. However, I don't know what the plan <laughs> is for blocking Miles Garrett. If you're the Bengals, I, I don't know. I, it is. It's one of those games where, like, the public had such a good week last week that, like, like literally, it was like one of the best weeks of all time for the public. Mm-hmm. Now I'm like sitting here like this week being like, well, they're going to get it all back. And like, these are one of those games where like the Browns could like win outright for no reason at all. I don't, there's nothing that I've seen on this from this Browns team. That's why they'll win. But that's exactly why they'd win. There was even a bit of me heading into last week against the Eagles. It was like, all right, we're going to get Deshaun Watson at an MVP level for no reason this week. And well, that's never going to happen. They, that's not, that's not offense, why they're going to win a game. They're, I know. Their offense put up, what, seven points? Yeah. And the Eagles should have lost that game, but whatever. <laughs> um, Next game, Titans at Bills. Titans are the best team in football. If you don't like watching them, you don't like watching football. Really, they you just don't. Um, Calvin Ridley, after the game last week, he had eight targets, zero catches. Um, he freaked out, was pissed, said that he needs like, I get it. I mean, like you went there, uh, you were sold something, uh, and you want, you obviously like Calvin Ridley has been a dog his entire career. I don't think that he enjoys having zero catches on a, on a Sunday. Um, I, that's his own fault, to be honest. Like, I why? don't feel bad for him. Why? You, you knew what you were getting when you signed up to have Will Levis as your quarterback. I mean, at a point, like, kind of, but, like, maybe, like, the degree of difficulty that, like, you're trying to get him the ball, like, downfield, like, like they use him as, like, a, sh- a field stretcher. Like, instead of just, like, kind of, like, they did, they do that with D-Hop, too. Like, they use D-Hop as, like, a field stretcher. Like, those guys should be cutting defenses up type shit. If you're um, Calvin Ridley and you hop in a time machine – and um, go back to when the Patriots sent you the offer. I don't remember if it was the same number. No, it wasn't. I, do you think, was it less? It was, yeah, it was less. Okay. I was going to say, if it was the same, I think he ends up going to New England. Yeah, pro- I mean, maybe. I mean, I don't know if the situation's any different. Um, I, I would rather right have, now. Matt, I, I would rather have Drake May throwing me the football than... <laughs> than Will Levis. I get I think I think literally like when you when he went and signed that contract, like that this contract is his last big contract, like ever. So yeah. he obviously he had to go it. and get it. Um, but I, I think him yeah. expressing that he like needs to get the ball like early and often, like I don't think that that's crazy to say. I'm not saying I feel bad for him, but like I definitely think that he is better than what has been put out on the field this year. I agree um, with that. And I think that like him doing that, like, like actually puts pressure on the coaching staff to be like, yeah, we did pay this guy. And like, yeah, why are we, why like any time that we target him, we're trying to get him like a 40 yard deep ball. Like, like he can do way more than that. He can. And I think that like, I like the, t- I actually like no joke, like actually like, like watching the Titans. They're great. Um, And I think that like, Will Levis sucks, but like I think that he can, if he can tone it down a little bit, like this team can get a lot more of out of what what they have. Um, from the Bills' perspective, I don't know. It's not fun to talk about the Bills. We we talked about the Bills enough at the beginning. Of this. <laughs> I don't like talking about the Bills. Like they might win this game. I don't know. They might not. Like I don't. I just don't really give a fuck about the Bills, honestly, on a week to week basis. When does Amari Cooper like? When does Amari Cooper get to play? It probably won't be this game. I don't probably see why next he week. Would, I don't see why he wouldn't play in this game. Really? I feel like I it takes see. a little bit longer usually with like a trade in the NFL, unless it's like a super rare instance, like this Devontae Adam one, where he's going and playing with a quarterback he's played for his whole career, basically. I guess we'll see. I I I would guess that he would play, but I don't know. Um 
Next game, Dolphins, Colts. Not much to talk about. I want to see Anthony Richardson play. Uh, plain and simple. Two is still not healthy. The Dolphins aren't going to be as good. But I'm just I the Colts need to see Anthony Richardson play. Need Jonathan Taylor to get healthy. It's uh, the line's three. They're favored by three. I think that's rightfully so with the state of the Dolphins right now. Yeah, and with like the uncertainty of what you're getting on a week to week basis from Anthony Richardson, um, he is slated to play. But you just have to see him play, like you said. Like, yeah, it's great you're winning football games when Joe Flacco's in there and and you're putting up a lot of points. But like that will wear off at some point in the season, and Joe Flacco is not your future. So no. Um. Next, back to these back to back games. One o'clock. Some big dog games. Houston at Green Bay. Green Bay is favored by uh, two and a half. Over unders at forty seven and a half. Um, I famously have been down on this uh, Texans team, even though they are a one loss team. Uh, I just, I don't know. I don't know when I watch them, they don't like pop out to me or like do anything that crazy. Um, I really like the, I think the Packers are are hungry and just like ready to go. Like each week, it feels like that they're just going to keep getting better and better as Jordan love, like is more and more healthy. Yeah, I uh, I completely agree. I have them in one of my my million dollar picks bets. Um, I I love the Packers in this situation, playing at home. Um, make it tough, make it tough on CJ Stroud in in Wisconsin. Um, and like you said, it looks like the Packers are pretty much getting better every week. Um, Jordan Love has looked better each week, and um, when this offense is clicking on full cylinders, this Green Bay Packers offense can be one of the best in the NFL. Easily. Um, I'm excited to watch that game. I will be taking the over in it. Feels like the over is going to hit in that shit. Um, next, Detroit Lions at the Minnesota Vikings. The Vikings are off a bye week. Um, they're favored by one and a half at home. Over under is 50 and a half. I, there's no reason in my, in my body to not take the Lions. Like in the spot, like I, Somebody texted me the other day and said, if a team from the NFC North missed the playoffs, who would you pick? And I said, the Vikings. Might be a hot take. It definitely is a hot take because they're undefeated right now. But if there's any team that falls off, like all of these teams, the the Lions look really good. The, the Packers are ascending. The Chicago Bears get better every single week. Like, I don't think that the Vikings are going to get better as the season progresses. You think that we've seen the best form of this Vikings team? You don't. And I think that's completely your, fair. You don't want to be playing your best football in September, and I think that's what we watched happen. So, yeah, I'm I'm just not in on the Minnesota Vikings. The uh, the Detroit Lions offense looked legitimately unstoppable um, last week. Um, against a depleted Cowboys team. But I do think the Vikings defense is much better than that Dallas defense. That's obviously not a hot take by any means. Um, it, also, it almost feels like the Vikings wished they didn't have a bye at this point in their season rather, to, rather than later in the year. Like, hey, we're playing really good football. We just want to keep this rolling. Um, we don't want a bye week. I agree with you. I think the Lions win this football game. I think their offense looked so good. Um, and the past couple of weeks, Jared Goff has been playing impressive football. Definitely. Yeah. Like I said, I just think that the Vikings fall off a little bit here. Next game, Seattle at Atlanta. Atlanta's favored by three. Uh, over under is 51 and a half. I don't know. <laughs> this this game tough. could go absolutely either way. Um, but both court, Gino and uh Kirk are definitely gonna be slaying it. Yeah, they uh this feels like an over game, even though it's all it's at 51 and a half. Um, but yeah, I'm right there with you. This does feel like a situation where either one of these teams can go out and win. We could get um Kirk Cousins throwing for 500 yards, or we could get Gino Smith throwing for 500 yards. Um I think this game is going to be really fun to watch. This might be, aside from, um, there are some good games this week. 
this Texans Packers game is going to be really good. Lions Vikings is going to be good. I think that this uh, Seattle Falcons game might be like the most slept on good football game that we have this weekend. Um, Completely agree with you. I, I I think we could also get a special uniform matchup here, um, but I like the way that the Falcons have been have been rolling, um, and I'm going to lean Falcons on this one. Fair. Uh, next game, Carolina Panthers out Commanders. I'm not going to spend too much time on it. Uh, eight and a half spread over under 51 and a half. It is what it is. I mean, it. I don't know. I don't have anything to say. Do you have anything? Commanders will roll on. Um, v- Vegas at LA Rams. The Rams are favored by six and a half points. The over under is at 43 and a half. I think the Rams are getting Cooper Cup back this week. Something that I like threw around is like, should we just take the Rams to win the NFC West as like, like buy low moment just like fuck it like let's just take the the ramps when the nfc west and like as they just get healthier every single week and like get cooper cup back get o-lineman back and like their defense rounds more into form and then get puka nakua back and then they're just probably like one of the scariest teams in the nfl i mean i don't think that that's a bad idea um by any means their next games are raiders vikings seahawks dolphins patriots eagles so like in those approaching weeks they could easily go five and one Uh, if they get like cooper cup back and start to get some linemen back like i don't hate that at all something to think about but yeah i like i obviously like them to win this game Um, well hold on let's take a look and see what that number looks like um all right rams to win the nfc west is plus 1100 that's what i'm saying it could be worth sprinkling could be i like it um next game kansas city chiefs at the 49ers the niners are favored by one and a half the over under is 47 and a half um again i know the chiefs are coming off of a bye uh, they're starting running backs, Kareem Hunt. Their number one wide receiver is Juju Smith Schuster. Um, I'm would I'm just gonna fade the Chiefs. Like I think at some point that they're gonna fall off here a little bit. They're not gonna go undefeated this entire season. Um, so I like the Niners in the spot for sure. Yeah, this has to be a can we finally get a revenge on the Kansas City Chiefs for beating us in the Super Bowl? Um, and it's in San Francisco. I mean, we we know Patrick Mahomes is good, but I don't trust these guys around him. Um, it's no. a really tough tough spot when you line up Juju Smith Schuster out there against a Niners team that we think is competent and certainly better than some of the guys that they've seen in the last few weeks. So I, I, I right, I'm right there with you. I like the Niners too. Yeah, I mean, unless if the if we get another ref game from from the Chiefs, then it is what it is. Um, Bro, something Chiefs crazy. fans loves like Chiefs fans love like denying that they don't get every call. I don't know any Chiefs fans in the comments. No, oh. um, I'll say one thing right now. I was watching the games with Andrew this past weekend. He was like, "Dude, the refs just like haven't really controlled any of these games." And I was like, "Yeah, because the Chiefs aren't in prime time, and it's not the most glaring thing of the entire weekend." And then last night, the Josh Allen plays the other golden boy and uh, there was a flag every 15 seconds. That game sucked. So just, just like, of course, like whenever the two like golden boys play, they get a million flags. But anyway, uh, there was too many flags on that in that Monday night game. It was terrible. It was legitimately every play. Yeah. To wrap it up, uh, New York jets at the Pittsburgh Steelers, another primetime game for this, for the Steelers at home. I just think they drop it. Uh, they're underdogs, one and a half at home. Like, oh, take take Tomlin as an underdog at home. Shit doesn't matter. Uh, the over under is thirty eight and a half. Um, I just like the Jets in this spot as a bounce back game for them. Yeah, I think the lights will be too bright. Um, we'll see Russ get the start. He's not good. He has to go up against a good Jets defense, and it. I don't think it's going to go well. Um, Quite frankly, I, I'm shocked that this is only a one and a half point spread. I think the Jets. I think the Jets win this game pretty easily. Me too. That's all I have for this week. You go ahead, dear million dollar picks. We do have two Monday night games this week that we will get to when we get to them. 
but go ahead and give your picks. I will be posting my picks in the Discord before Noah gives his picks and we send it off. Make sure to like the video, subscribe, subscribe. comment, join the Discord, and talk to us and post your bets and hang out. Um, it's been active. Our guy Pat is carrying the torch um, wholeheartedly. That guy literally bets every single night on multiple <laughs> He <events>. does. <laughs> um, so shout out Pat. And go ahead with what you have for for t- for this week. All right, right now, obviously, we started at a million dollars. I'm currently at eight hundred forty nine thousand seven hundred fifty six dollars and forty cents. So not quite negative a million, but still not great. Um, yeah, your fault. <laughs> my first one is a teaser with the Pats plus eleven and a half, Packers plus three and a half, hundred fifteen thousand. To win $86,257.41. We pretty much talked about both of those games anyways um, at the beginning of this. My next one, obviously we just talked about this, but I've got 185 k on the Jets minus one and a half to win $160,869.57. I've got a Tony Pollard anytime touchdown. There's no line on that yet, but um, I, I like that a lot. And then Alvin Kamara anytime touchdown. No, I don't think there's a line on that yet either, but I, I like him to find the end zone as well. Wow. I need to see. I would have. Oh, wait, they do have an Alvin Kamara. Anytime touchdown is minus 110. So let's put 115. 115 grand to win $104,545.45. Nice. Do you have any idea as to what you like first glance? I do, but I'm not sitting here giving it to you because you're a douchebag and <laughs> took me out of what I wanted to do last last night or two nights ago. So that's all I have. Do you have anything else? <laughs> no, I'm I'm good to go. All right. I will see you later. All right. White clouds blowing out when we max four five. Size, but it kick up, kick up, high line.